Hello everyone and welcome to another Adobe Illustrator for KDB tutorial video. I have been amazed by the response that I'm getting to these videos uh, and as long as it's obvious that um, you guys are getting something from these tutorials I will keep on making them. Um, so let's go ahead and try to keep the conversation going. Drop your comments and questions below on YouTube um, or in the Facebook group itself. Um, today we'll be talking about patterns and uh, how you can use patterns on covers. Um, and this is the uh, book cover we will be looking at as our example. Um, as always, this is not a finished design, uh, but it's a work in progress. So I'll be teaching you guys today how to create a pattern and how to um, change some of the parameters to edit that pattern um, for different effect. So if you give me a second here, I'm going to go ahead and um, lock all these layers and hide them. I'll create a new layer for myself and we can get started. Okay, so um, like always, I'll be working with some pre-made assets that I have here. Um, so some of them, I'll go through some of my symbols here. And so I'll be working with these skulls today. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and drop, um, let's see, skull number 13. Let me drag it over here. Okay. Um, and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to uh, break the link up here where it says edit symbol or break link. I actually don't want it to continue as a symbol. I just want it to be a normal um, image. So I'm going to break the link there. Now if I hold down um, Alt and Shift, I can shrink this down uh, to a size that I want, which we can always change later. But we'll start with that for now. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my swatches panel. Um, and here you have uh, all of your colors and your gradients, your grayscale. And it's also the place where you keep all of your patterns. There's, also a there's already a bunch of patterns down here for you to look at. So I'm actually just going to grab my artwork that's already selected and drag it onto the swatches palette. Okay. Um, and so now I'm done with the artwork, so I'm actually going to delete it from the document. And I'm just going to be working with that pattern. Um, so patterns need to exist within artwork. So I can't just go and open up a pattern on this blank document. So I'm going to click on my rectangle tool. And I'm going to try and create a rectangle the exact size of my page here which is um, 6 by 9 which um, I know is not a standard size for a cover you have to account for bleed and you know all that other stuff uh, but for this example it should be fine so I've now created a um, rectangle here so if I come over here I have my fill selected right I don't want my stroke selected I want fill selected so you gotta click on it so it moves to the front and then if I click on these colors you'll notice that it fills that rectangle I just created with whatever color I click on. Um, you can actually also uh, click on gradients if you want to have a gradient within your um, rectangle. But I don't want those things. What I want is the pattern I just created. So I'm going to click on that pattern and you'll see that it now fills uh, my space with that skull. <clears throat> if I double click on the pattern, that's where I get some uh, different parameters pop up so that we can um, manipulate the way that this pattern looks. The first thing I'll show you is that, uh, well actually we should name it up here uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna call this Skull 005 because I was playing with some uh, earlier. And then here you have the tile type, right? And the first one is grid, which it just evenly spaces things horizontally and vertically. Um, uh, and that's it. There's not much else to it than that. Uh, I'm going to switch to the next tile type, and that is brick by row. So it takes these rows and it offsets them to create a brick pattern. And that looks pretty cool for this um, skull and crossbones since it is a horizontal uh, design element. Um, and we can also come down here and look at the brick offset. So right now it's one half means that uh, the skulls are offset by one half of their total width. Right, so it looks very even going across the page, but you can change that, right? You can have it offset by a third, a fourth, right, and so on. There's a whole bunch of fractions here, but uh, I do like it at one half, so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, we have also have brick by column, right, where it offsets your design vertically, right? So you have these different columns, uh, and as you move from column to column, these skulls are offset from each other, and that looks kind of cool too. Hex by column. It creates a hexagon um, shape out of your design element. And so this is hex by column, and then you have hex by row as well. So um, 
I'm going to go back to grid. Let's keep it simple uh, to start off. And let's start looking at the width and height here. All right. So first of all, you can link these two. And if you link the two, when you change one, the next uh, number in the field down here will change in proportion to that first number that you input. Now, I recommend you not keep them linked. Okay, so I'm going to break the link there. And that's because, you know, it's easy to just create a pattern and use whatever you get. Um, but if you want to become a better designer, it's good to see things in a whole bunch of different ways so that you learn to figure out by feel what looks good to you, what feels good to you. You get a sense for what is good design. And I'm going to show you how we do that here. So I'm going to click on the width. After clicking in that field, I'm just going to go to my arrow keys and I'm going to click up. And it starts widening the space between these skulls. Okay, Click down and it goes back the other direction. And that's how I ended up with um, what I got in that uh, pattern on that cover that I showed you. So I keep moving it closer and closer until it looks like the ball and socket joint on these skulls is actually interlocked. Oops, wrong direction. And there we go. So then I'm going to come down here and click on my height, which is the spacing between the skulls. Sorry, that keyboard keeps popping up. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to increase the space. And what we're really looking at is the negative space. I'm sure you guys have heard that term before. But the negative space is not your primary shapes or skulls, but all the white area in between the skulls. And we want that shape to look as interesting as the skulls themselves. So we're going to click up and down until it's something that feels right to us. So at some point, it's going to be very obvious that it's too spread out, right? So we're going to go back in the other direction until this feels right to us. And I actually like the way that negative space looks right about there. I like this. So I'm going to go and I'm going to click Save a Copy. Okay. And then you can name it whatever you want, right? So I'm going to go ahead and name this Skull 006, right? When I click OK, I get a new pattern here in my swatches palette, right? So this is a good way to scale your covers. Every little change you make you can go and click save a copy and you have a new background pattern. Okay, so, um, you know, let's say you want to change this from grid to brick by row. Click save a copy, you have a new pattern. Okay, click on brick by column, change the spacing. Click save a copy, you have a new pattern to work with. It's a good way to build up a collection of covers. Okay, so uh, one other thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to let me see, let me go back to the height. And I'm gonna actually have these overlap a little bit. And that's just so I can show you some other features in here. Now you'll notice um, I have these white spaces now at the top and the bottom. Now you, for some designs that might work, for others it might not. Um, for this example, I think we're gonna try and fill the whole space. So if you come down here to copies, right now it's five by five. So we have five skulls going horizontally and five skulls going vertically. So I'm actually going to change that and I'm going to go seven by five. And that's going to ensure that my entire cover um, gets um, covered, right, with these skulls. Um, but you'll notice that the skulls that are on the top are actually the ones that are in front of the skulls as you go lower and lower on the page. And that's where these buttons come in, these overlap buttons, right? So you decide whether you want them overlapping from left to right or right to left, and whether you want them overlapping from top to bottom or bottom to top. So right now we have um, objects that are higher in the pattern are overlapping the ones that are below it in the pattern. Like I said, that might be great for some patterns, but with the skull, since we want the top of the head showing, we're actually gonna switch that. And now we have the top of the skulls um, showing on everyone and the mouths of the skulls or the teeth are being hidden by the skull beneath and there's my pattern okay now when you're setting up a cover this would be the size of a trim right so that you would have this pattern going off the page in all directions but let's say you were doing something 
where you did want this to be more even, right? E more evenly spaced. I'm going to show you another thing you can do here. So I'm going to go into my layers palette and I'm going to, let me see. I only have one thing there, but I'm going to make sure to select it, my rectangle, right? I'm going to go up to object and transform and I'm going to click move and let's say uh, again I want to see how things look uh, little by little so I'm going to put in an increment of 0.1 I only want this to move 0.1 inches um, and I'm going to click preview and see that it's moving towards the right and that is the direction I want it to move if I wanted it moving towards the left I would come up here and put negative 0.1 and when I hit preview, you'll see it moves towards the left. But that's not what I want. I want point 0.1 heading towards the right. Make sure with preview, that's what I want. Um, then here you have options. Do you want to transform the object, meaning the rectangle? Or do you want to transform the pattern or both? In this case, I only want to transform the pattern. I want the rectangle to stay where it is. So I'm going to uncheck the box next to transform objects. I'm only going to transform the pattern. And now I'm not going to hit copy. We hit copy the other day for some uh, different design elements. Today I'm going to hit OK because I don't want a copy of this entire pattern. I'm going to click OK. And so now if I go and hit Control D, which was uh, duplicate or do again, um, you'll see how it looks going from left to right. And there is my pattern. If you guys have any questions, um, leave them in the comments below or on the Facebook page. Thank you for listening.